Hello YouTubers, welcome to my video, I'm Mr McRaven and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at some more uh, gaming benchmarks uh, using the AMD FX8350 PAR driver CPU. Uh, those of you that have seen the first uh, video will have some understanding of the uh, results I got there uh, with the uh, FX8350. I did uh, some benchmarks with it at stock with the turbo enabled and also overclocked to 4.5 uh, gigahertz uh, using a GTX 580 GPU. So uh, in this video you can see that I have uh, upgraded the uh, GPU to a GTX 680 which is a high-end uh, card. Uh, it's a, a lot more powerful than the uh, 580. So some of the results are going to be um, different to the first uh, benchmarks uh, due to this being a much more powerful uh, GPU. Uh, the reason I'm doing uh, another set of benchmarks is because I've received a few comments on the first video uh, about some of the games I used uh, weren't challenging enough or that I should use uh, this game or that game. So I've included a couple more uh, new games uh, to these benchmarks uh, to get some um, different results. So I've included uh, Metro 2033 which is very challenging on any system. Uh, and I've also included Far Cry 3 which is a beautiful game uh, but also requires quite a lot uh, from a system to run at uh, its maximum details. I've also included uh, Sniper Elite of V2 uh, which isn't uh, massively intensive and it's not uh, a stunning graphics game but it is a, a newer uh, game that some of you might be playing but I've included that as well. Some of the uh, older games I've included um, uh, with these benchmarks and some of them I got rid of because they didn't really um, seem suitable having run them once uh, I decided not to run them again things like Dead Space 2 where the uh, the frame rates were going up to the hundreds um, it didn't seem relevant to uh, redo that again so uh, this video is about looking at the uh, gaming uh, benchmarks and uh, we're going to draw some conclusions at the end uh, to the results for each of these benchmarks and um, hopefully it'll uh, prove informative uh, to some of you out there looking to upgrade either your CPU or your GPU. Uh, what this video isn't about isn't a, uh, a war between Intel and AMD and which is better. Uh, it all depends on what system um, you're trying to build or if you already have a system and you're looking to upgrade. Um, it's all about uh, that. You, you don't know until you, you purchase this kind of stuff and you actually start using it in a real system uh, quite how it's going to perform so uh, this is what this video is here to do is try and help you uh, the consumer uh, the, the, the viewer um, as to how it's going to perform in a real system so I'm a real gamer I play lots of games uh, I do lots of other things as well uh, so how I use my computer is how a lot of people use the computer and um, the results uh, are going to reflect that so we're going to look through uh, the results and then we'll draw conclusions uh, at the end. So we're going to start with Metro 2033. I'm going to blow it up here so you can see it. Uh, all the games were run at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and where possible all the maximum settings were set. Um, so if there was an ultra setting I picked it and uh, tried to max out the, each game uh, in turn as much as possible. It was measured across um, three runs, 60 seconds each run, using uh, FRAPS, which was um, recording to a separate hard drive so as not to affect performance uh, too much. So now that that's the uh, information done with, we're going to take a look at the results here for Metro 2033. A uh, very uh, system intensive game, and um, yes, quite a challenge. I, ne I didn't realize until I uh, installed the game quite how challenging this is on the system. Uh, but it is visually a very impressive uh, game nonetheless. Uh, so we're going to look at the results now and on the right hand side we'll see the results for a stock 8350 and on the left uh, we'll see the results for an overclocked uh, 8350. Uh, somebody did ask me if I can put it up to 5 GHz. Unfortunately I couldn't run stable enough at 5 GHz uh, but I compromised and I come down to 4.8 GHz uh, overclock uh, on the 8350 with the turbo disabled. So the results are going to be the same for uh, uh, both the stock and 4.81. So we've got 24 on the minimum and 21 on the minimum here on the overclocked one and uh, 41 over 42, uh, 57 
over 61. The uh, maximum frame rate isn't as important as the minimum and the average and we can see here that it's probably within margin of error uh, and not really a huge amount of differences uh, between the two uh, settings there for Metro 2033. Uh, moving on to Battlefield 3, uh, the Ultra preset with 4 times multi sampled anti aliasing. We can see 68 on the minimum, 66, 92 versus 88, and 114 versus 117. Again, this is kind of within the margin of error uh, between the two tests, so uh, it's nothing too great a distance there between the two. I would say they, they're pretty much running the same um, there between the overclocked and the stock one. Okay, I've kept Bad Company 2 in because I still play it and a lot of you still play it and I think it's still uh, reasonably relevant uh, a game, but it's still popular so I've kept it uh, in. Uh, maximum settings with uh, HB ambient occlusion on and we can see the minimum is 94 versus 95, 125 versus 128, 156 versus 150. Uh, again, not a huge difference between the two, pretty much uh, margin of error again uh, between the two there, so the minimums bang on pretty much the same so it's the average and the maximum isn't that great a difference between the two either. On to Borderlands 2 we can see uh, everything's set to maximum here and I'm using physics on a NVIDIA GPU and that was set to very high if you don't have a NVIDIA GPU and you're using AMD uh, you can download physics um, software and I'm pretty sure you can run the physics uh, off the CPU which of course is going to detract some of the power from the processor um, rather than putting it onto the GPU so you might lose a few frames to gain the benefits of uh, PhysX but I'm pretty sure that's uh, how it can work and we see uh, good frame rate differences between the two here not massive but uh, still a boost uh, 62 over 72 uh, 92 over 101 and 131 over 144 so uh, roughly 10 frames per second uh, increase uh, with the overclock there on Borderlands 2 DirectX 11 game um, it's not a massive boost, but considering it's a GTX 680 uh, powering it, uh, that's uh, a nice little boost there for Borderlands 2. The one you've all been waiting for is uh, Far Cry 3. Uh, that was set to Ultra with 4 times multi sampled anti aliasing, and I used HD ambient occlusion. Uh, there are a few options for ambient occlusion in the game, I just used HD AO uh, as an example. Could have picked uh, any of them, but I used that one uh, uh, for this benchmark. So we can see the uh, minimum of 36 FPS over 41, 46 over 50, and uh, the maximum 61 of 58 um, within a margin of error there. So a small boost there again in Far Cry 3, which helps. Uh, it's a beautiful looking game, very fun to play, and uh, yeah, so a very slight increase uh, again there, uh, just like Borderlands 2 with the uh, overclock. Uh, moving on to Sniper Elite V2, not the most visually impressive game, but still very nice looking game. Uh, fairly easy gameplay, very very much a single player type of game. Uh, we can see everything was set on the ultra settings uh, within that game. We can see uh, the minimum of 103 over 98, 135 over 133 within the margin of error, and 206 over 195. Uh, you could see this that the overclock is actually hurting uh, some of these games and it's actually lowering the FPS. Well some of it is within margin of error but we'll go over why uh, the overclock is hurting uh, some of these games uh, at the end. Okay on to Skyrim which is more CPU intensive than uh, some games. Uh, everything was set to Ultra with 4 times uh, MSAA and 16 AF and it has uh, 3 high definition texture mods uh, added onto it. It looks visually impressive, a very nice game, it looks great with these uh, high definition texture mods. Can't remember which uh, ones exactly but they uh, do detract a little from the performance. So we can see the minimum of 32 on the stock clock and the overclock really helps it here, boosts it up to 43 on minimum, uh, 75 average uh, over 82, so again a boost there, and even on the uh, maximum FPS uh, 121 over 127. So again the overclock here coming in, uh, third game in a row, uh, now it's, uh, it's actually helping to boost up the uh, frame rate uh, a little bit on uh, the games that require the CPU uh, to be a bit quicker rather than uh, architecturally better. So that's the Skyrim and we've uh, got the total FPS here. 
which I put at the end. I didn't do percentage differences because the actual differences uh, between them all and all the games wasn't hugely significant enough to do that. Uh, we see 419 over 436, a little improvement. Uh, 606 over 624, again, a small improvement, and maximum frame rates, a uh, small improvement there. So there's not a huge, uh, massive difference uh, between the overclocked and the uh, stock. So we can drop that down. So what uh, conclusions uh, can we draw? Uh, from it. Well, the first thing you'll probably notice is that some of the games uh, ran a little worse, uh, if you like, when it was overclocked as opposed to when it was at stock. And I believe the reason uh, for this is that when the CPU was designed and it's designed to run at uh, 4 gigahertz with a 4.2 turbo, the turbo kicks in when certain amounts of cores are being used and it keeps it within the TDP with the 125 uh, watts uh, total dependent power. Uh, within the CPU so it actually performs better when it's not requiring so much the speed but it's requiring the right amount of speed across the right amount of cores it's a little more complex than that but I'm not going to go into depth of uh, how the CPU works in that way but needless to say that some game titles uh, will work better at stock than they will uh, overclocked with just pure uh, clock frequency um, some of the games did perform slightly better with the um, the frequency uh, upped uh, to 4.8 or even 4.5 as you can see from the previous video um, and that's going to happen across some games naturally in any way where they, they will benefit from the extra speed of the CPU uh, there. The GTX 680 does make a huge difference compared to the previous test where the 580 was used because it's a lot more powerful, it can provide a lot more uh, frames um, than the previous generation uh, NVIDIA GPU so naturally you're going to get uh, improved uh, frame rate there so what else can I draw from this conclusion well to be honest if you're on a low to mid-range GPU uh, anything from uh, 6000 series or 500 series uh, NVIDIA uh, upwards uh, to 7850 7950 or uh, what's in NVIDIA 660 650 and the 660 tie something like that if you have an 8350 you're going to see um, some good performance uh, increase in games across uh, in general across the board uh, as you can see from my previous video it was upwards of 20% uh, if not 25% uh, increase in frames uh, per second uh, in certain games uh, depending on how your system is configured so it's not all uh, bad news um, I wasn't expecting huge uh, frame rate increases just from overclocking the CPU because the GPU itself is uh, very powerful and it will take on most of the uh, requirements uh, of the game uh, when asked. So the CPU is there to boost uh, where it could and uh, sometimes it couldn't purely because the, uh, the GPU was doing most of the work. So in the end, uh, if you're looking uh, to buying a 8350 and you have a mid-range graphics card then uh, you should expect to see some great benefits from using this uh, CPU and a mid-range card and um, I would say it's definitely uh, worth it uh, as far as that goes uh, and the same applies to uh, Intel's equivalent which would be a uh, i5 3570K which is also a super processor and has a slightly faster uh, IPC than the uh, AMD However, the AMD does multitask better, so if you're somebody who games but also likes to do other things in the background as well, or you have multi-monitors, uh, then the uh, 8350 will probably be uh, the slightly better choice. As far as multiple GPU setups, the uh, 8350 can handle uh, multiple GPUs and it does not uh, bottleneck. I hope this has all proved helpful, and uh, if it has, leave a comment below, let me know. If you have questions, uh, just leave them below and I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. I hope this has been helpful to you all, uh, but that's it from me. Uh, until next time, uh, check out the other videos on my channel, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye for now.